name is Ketavon. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd take the opportunity to share with you my little pile of possibilities on my TBR shelf. So all of the books on my shelf that are authored by um, authors who are indigenous to North America. So the territories known today as Canada and the United States. Um, if the authors are uh, from an indigenous group that are from those two territories, then that's this pile, <laughs> basically. So um, I would actually say the majority, everything but two of them, um, are books that I just came across. Um, like in my book hunting normal habits. Um, and two of them I'm gonna save to the end, the ones that I like specifically ordered and really wanted to read. So um, I'll start with the two that I'm most excited for. Um, the first one is My People the Sioux by uh, Luther Standing Bear. And so this is actually one of the first books written by um, a Native American person. Like a lot of, um, it's from, it's published in 1975, so it's very old. But at that point there have been lots of books about Native peoples but not really so much written by them. <laughs> so this is his autobiography, and it sounds like he has a fantastic life. Um, he was born in the 1860s, the son of a Lakota chief. Um, he witnessed the ghost dance uprising from the Pine Ridge Reservation. He toured Europe with Buffalo um, Bill, his Wild West show. Um, and he devoted his later years to the Indian rights movements in the 1920s and 30s. So, um, and it says he um, offers the rare inside view of somebody, of an Indian who successfully made the transition from traditional tribal life to the white man's world, but never lost his pride and identification with his Indian heritage. So it sounds like this is going to be just a fantastic um, story, but also it's on this list of I think it's a hundred books, a uh, hundred classic books written by people of color. And I had like looked at that list and I was like, oh, okay. Like I've read a couple of these books, but I want to read more. So I made like a little list of 10 that I was interested in. And this book was on the list. And um, I like kind of put it to the side and I, I have lots of lists of books like <laughs> all over my computer. Um, but I hadn't made any plans to buy any of them on the list necessarily. And then like a month later, I found this in my used bookstore, like just down the street from me. So I was like very excited to get to that one. And then the next one is Moon of the Crusted Snow. And this one is uh, Canadian and it's an, actually an apocalyptic novel. And it's like, uh, I forget the tribe. It's, um, yeah, so up in the north of Canada, it's an Anishinaabe, I think is how you say it, community. And um, basically just like the power, the electricity and the, the, like all the communication, like internet goes down. I'm not sure why, but it's the middle of the winter and they're very remote. So they don't ever figure out exactly what happened, but just, they know now that those resources are gone. So then they basically have to sort of like adjust. And then, um, I, I don't know how, I, I can't spoil it because I haven't read it, but, but like um, basically some outsiders arrive and, and I guess things happen. So it seems like a really interesting twist on like, um, or not, it's not really a twist, but like, like a repetition of what happened before. Like, you know, I'm, I'm guessing the outsiders are white. And so like the white people coming being like, oh, please help us. So they have to decide then what to do and how to do it. So um, that should be really interesting, especially for snowy season. And then this next one is actually, um, I picked it up at a book swap with, um, for my friend Hannah, I'll link her channel down below. My Heart is a Chainsaw, Stephen Graham Jones. And I, uh, don't really know anything about this book other than it's like our main character, what's her name, Jade, is obsessed with horror movies. And then she kind of like finds herself in a horror movie. There's like a murder in her town and she kind of like, is, you know, doing a little bit of a sleuthing. Um, but it's not a mystery novel. It's not like, oh, I'm figuring it out. It's more like a horror novel because all these horror things are happening to her as well. So yeah, it's, it sounds really interesting. Um, I kind of wish I had read this in October. I didn't get around to it because of Doorstop or Doom, but probably next year. <laughs> okay, sorry, memory card was full. So the next up is Birdie by Tracy Lindbergh. And um, now that I'm flipping through this, I actually remember exactly where I got this from. It was like a little free library um, when I was visiting one of my friends. And um, in it, you can see there's like a little log of every time. I'm guessing a child read this book. It doesn't seem like a children's book, but I don't know. I read a lot of adult books as a kid. <laughs> so anyway, it's about a Cree woman named Birdie who leaves her home from Alberta to go to um, BC. And she's on a bit of a vision quest. She kind of has this idea of meeting this like um, celebrity um, native man from a TV show, maybe? I'm not sure. <laughs> Beachcombers, I've never heard of that. So I'll just read the 
the little like description. Um, it's a darkly comic and moving first novel about the universal experience of recovering from tragedy. At heart, it's the story of an extraordinary woman who travels to the deepest part of herself to find the strength to face the past and to build a new life. The next one I actually found, I was really surprised. I found it at a library sale for like probably a dollar and uh oh three dollars i see it in pencil written <laughs> but it's the plague of doves by louise erdrich and so it's a multi-generational story of what is it an ojibwe family um in north dakota there's an unsolved murder um on a farm family oh a farm family so i think the whole family was murdered so an unsolved murder of a farm family um haunts the whole town and then the vengeance and distortions of truth and kind of all the like fall out from that basically change um how the Ojibwe I'm guessing are treated in the nearby reservation uh and, and like trickles down to like the next generations I'm really looking forward to this book in particular like there's a lot of books from her that I was like oh that sounds nice but this one in particular is a lot about like the criminal justice system it's sort of like taking a fictional look at, at like how Ojibwe people people are treated in this particular very microcosm criminal justice system um which is something that interests me um particular so that's the plague of doves and then last but definitely not least because these are the two i actually like went out and found and ordered um the first one is crazy horse's girlfriend by erica t worth this one i actually like literally wanted to order it since like february of this year and i just could not find it anywhere and if i ordered it from my like local bookstore it was like over 30 euro and i was like ooh, no i want to read it but not that bad so the reason i wanted to purchase this book or the reason i actually even found out that this book existed is because i had just finished a sherman alexi book and was googling something about it and i was just like okay this is interesting and then i all of a sudden stumbled upon the fact that he has like huge sexual abuse allegations I was like just reading about it just you know the the interesting I'll say thing about his abuse allegations is that almost all of his victims were fellow writers so fellow uh, indigenous writers uh women so I just found a little list of them and picked a few books from their bodies of work and I read the description of this one and it sounded super interesting so this one is about marguerite she's 16 living in colorado crippled by intense poverty unemployment drug abuse she deals drugs she hates everything about her world and her her boyfriend i'm guessing crazy horse <laughs> and um he's unfaithful oh and she gets pregnant before the daily suffocation of teen pregnancy eats her alive so basically it's, it's her debut novel and um this whole like description of this kind of teenage girl um just reminds me a lot of the teenage girls i used to work with to be honest um not i didn't work with too many indigenous um teenagers but but yeah this kind of like wow this hits every like little bucket um is super um I won't I can't say relatable because it wasn't me but like I I it reminds me of people I've worked with and like people I still remember to this day so I'm looking forward to reading this novel um and supporting a victim <laughs> and then the next one was The Jailing of Cecilia Capture by Janet uh Campbell Hale this one again like was almost impossible to find in Europe but I picked it up um actually very inexpensively in the United States but basically this is another like criminal uh criminology like fictional book that I really was interested in she's a law student actually and she's a mother of two and she gets jailed on her 30th birthday for drunk driving so like you're thinking to yourself like she's 30 years old she has two kids she's in law school and like how could you be so together and like drunk drive and it's like well drunk driving is like a very complicated thing and like yeah, I'm sure the novel will drive into that. But then she's actually held on an old welfare fraud charge. So she then is sitting in jail, reflecting on her life um, on, the on a reservation in Idaho, um, her days um, as a single mom in San Francisco, her marriage to a white liberal, that should be interesting, and her decision to return to college. The last sentence is, this mixed inheritance of ambition and despair brings her to the brink of suicide. So this is kind of like, I think and encapsulate like that like 
feeling of like, I did everything I could. I, I did what I needed to do. And still things are just like hanging back and holding me back. So this will be really interesting, I think. But again, it, I really just picked it up like purely for the criminology aspect. Yeah, I'm flipping through it. And I think she's like in in jail the entire time. Um, I don't, I don't know, maybe she got sentenced and she got switched to prison. But anyway, so that's Cecilia, the jailing of Cecilia capture. So those are my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books um, that are on my TBR right now. Um, I'm hoping to get to at least one of them this month. Um, I <laughs> will see, but <laughs> um, I don't know. All of the none of these are available on audiobook. I think so. I'm gonna have. <laughs> I, I mean, you might know already. I'm very slow when it comes to like physical reading. So I'll probably start at least start one or two of these and then probably finish it like. December or January. But anyway, um, those are my seven books. Um, if you've read any of them, let me know what you think of them. Um, and if any of them sound interesting to you as well, let me know. And as always, like if you didn't like it, I want to know as well too. <laughs> so but anyway, thanks for um, watching and until next time. Bye! <laughs>